You're lucky to have a long line, Wilbert told Thomas and Toby. Mine is only one and a half miles long, with a station at Norchard and another at Lydney. The scenery is super, though, and my driver says it's better up the valley. Our volunteers are going to open that bit, too. They work hard, but it takes a long time. One of Wilbert's first jobs was at the lead mine. Don't pass the danger notice, Thomas warned. I fell down a mine once. Wilbert smiled. I've worked in a colliery, he said, so I know about danger notices. But, he added, there was an engine once who thought he knew better. What happened? asked Toby and Thomas. Wilbert paused. This engine didn't have a name, he began. Just a number, 16, and he worked in a steelworks. One of the jobs that Sixteen and his friends had to do was to take the waste from the works in special trucks to a place they called the Tip. Well, went on Wilbert, Sixteen got tired of always stopping in the same place. He tried to go further, but his driver always prevented him. The other engines tried to stop him too. If the notice says danger, you shouldn't pass it, they said. Sixteen paid no attention. Don't be stupid, his driver said. We mustn't pass the notice, or goodness knows where we shall end up. But Sixteen wanted to know. Pooh, he scoffed. I can take care of myself. One wet day, Sixteen's chance came. The rails were slippery, and when his driver tried to stop, he couldn't. You see, Sixteen had asked the trucks which were in front of him to carry on past the warning sign. They did just that, and their momentum pulled Sixteen with them. You silly engine, scolded his driver. Wasn't my fault, muttered Sixteen sulkily. It was those trucks. You always wanted to pass that board, said the driver crossly. I believe you asked them to drag us on purpose. A foreman ran towards them. What are you doing there, driver, he shouted. It's not safe. The trucks dragged us, explained the driver. Well, come to the office with me, and you, fireman, get your engine back on firm ground before it's too late, ordered the foreman. But it was already too late. As the foreman turned away, the earth beneath sixteen wheels sank, and the rails sagged. A small rush of stones clattered away to the bottom of the bank. Sixteen's fireman knew that if he tried to move the engine now, he would only make things worse. Oh, uh, groaned Sixteen. Beneath his weight, the rails sagged even more. Suddenly, they fell away completely. As the fireman leapt for safety, Sixteen overbalanced. The coupling between him and the trucks broke and rolled cab over wheels down the bank. He reached the bottom with a crash and lay on his side, looking surprised and leaking steam in all directions. Help! He gasped weakly. Thomas and Toby were silent. What happened to Sixteen after that? ventured Toby. Oh, he was rescued, Wilbert said. But he wasn't repaired and he was sent to the back of the shed in disgrace. Is he still there? asked Thomas. He got better than he deserved, smiled Wilbert. Some preservation people came and bought him, and now he lives in the Midlands. But I think he's lucky to have been given a second chance. Thomas and Toby could only agree.